Welcome back, readers. All right, our second read through of the story. We read it yesterday straight through for fluency. So today we're really going to focus on um, trying to understand what Sylvester was doing and how he changes from the beginning of the story to the end of the story, as well as his parents. So take a look at the title. It is Sylvester and the Magic Pebble by William Stieg. So we can see the picture a little better today. Um, you can see that this is definitely the piggy house with his piggy gate. You can see the chicken family or the hen family that the daddy donkey is talking to. Um, and that Maybe that's their house, we can assume, up there. But let's read. And then, of course, there's Sylvester sitting on, his, on a rock. Maggie, Lucy, and Jenny. Here we go. Sylvester Duncan lived with his mother and father at Acorn Road in Oatsdale. One of his hobbies was collecting pebbles of unusual shape and color. On a rainy Saturday during vacation, he found a quite extraordinary one. It was flaming red, shiny, and perfectly round like a marble. As he was studying this remarkable pebble, he began to shiver, probably from excitement, and the rain felt cold on his back. I wish it would stop raining, he said. To his great surprise, the rain stopped. It didn't stop gradually, as rain usually does. It ceased. The Drops vanished on the way down. The clouds disappeared. Everything was dry. The sun was shining as if the rain had never existed. Let's take a look at the word cease. I'm going to move my camera in. It says it ceased. Anybody know what ceased means? So it says the rain didn't gradually stop. So it said it doesn't, it didn't slowly kind of stop um, and turn like to a, a light rain and then a mist and then dry. It says it ceased. So ceased means it stopped. It completely stopped in its track, track, like someone turned on and off the rain switch. So that's bizarre. That doesn't, like he said, that doesn't typically happen. So this is the first sign, I think, that Sylvester is noticing. Oh, this is a little weird. This is unusual. So this might be a magic pebble is what he's thinking. In all of his young life, Sylvester had never had a wish gratified so quickly. It struck him that the magic must be at work, and he guessed that the magic must be in the remarkable looking red pebble, where indeed it was. To make a test, he put the pebble on the ground and said, I wish it would rain again. Nothing happened, but when he said the same thing, holding the pebble in his hoof, the sky turned black. There was lightning and a clap of thunder, and the rain came shooting down. Ooh, that was a good test. What a lucky day this is, thought Sylvester. From now on, I can have anything I want. My father and my mother can have anything they want. My relatives, my friends, anybody at all can have everything anybody wants. He wished the sunshine back in the sky, and he wished a wart on his left hind fetlock would disappear and it did and he started home eager to amaze his father and mother with the magic pebble he could hardly wait to see the fa their faces maybe they wouldn't even believe him at first i think it's interesting that the author chose to include that sentence maybe they wouldn't even believe him at first so picture one of your best friends comes over to you and says i found a magic eraser it does whatever I want it to do. What if I wish it while it's in my hand? Are you going to believe them? Probably not. I don't think I would. That's foolish. Why would there be magic in an eraser or a pebble like Sylvester is saying? So it's funny that Sylvester is already predicting that everybody I tell is not going to believe me, but maybe he'll show them like he tested himself because he didn't believe it at first either, so he had to put it to a test. So that's what I would do anyways. If I needed to prove to somebody that I had a magic eraser, I would prove it to them by showing them. As he was crossing Strawberry Hill, thinking of some of the many, many things he could wish for, he was startled to see a mean, hungry lion looking right at him from behind some tall grass. So he's not just a mean lion, he's mean and hungry. He could have made the lion, or if he hadn't been so frightened, so he's saying if Sylvester wasn't so scared, he could have made the lion disappear, or he could have wished himself safe at home with his father and mother. 
He could have wished the lion would have turned into a butterfly or a daisy or a gnat. A gnat, if you don't know, is a very, very teeny tiny bug that just flies through the air. They're kind of annoying. He could have wished many things, but he panicked and he couldn't think carefully. So there were all these things he could have done. Like, turn. He's got the magic pebble. I wish the lion would be a butterfly. So then I wouldn't hurt him. But instead, Sylvester says, I wish I were a rock, he said, and he became a rock. The lion came bounding over and sniffed the rock a hundred times, walked around and around it, and when it went away confused, perplexed, puzzled, bewildered. I saw that little donkey as clear as day. Maybe I'm going crazy, he muttered. <laughs> I like his face here especially because the last thing that the, the mean lion says is maybe I'm going crazy. So he kind of walks away a little like, oh, maybe I am a little wonky. But uh, <clears throat> this page is a really important page in our story because this, like Sylvester said, he could have just taken care of this situation like that by wishing him into a butterfly. But he kind of froze, he panicked, and he said, I wish I were a rock. And this is where the problem starts. So here's Sylvester, nice shade of gray. And there was Sylvester, a rock on Strawberry Hill and the magic pebble lying right beside him on the ground, and he was unable to pick it up. Why wasn't he able to pick it up? He didn't have hooves anymore, or arms. Oh, how I wish I were myself again, <clears throat> he thought, but nothing happened. He had to be touching the pebble to make the magic work. There was nothing he could do about it. His thoughts began to race like mad. He was scared and worried. Being helpless, he felt hopeless. He imagined all the possibilities and eventually he realized that his only chance of becoming himself again was for someone to find the red pebble and to wish that the rock next to it would be a donkey. Someone would surely find the red pebble. It was so bright and shiny, but what on earth would make them wish that the rock would turn into a donkey? The chance was one in a billion at best. Sylvester fell asleep. What else could he do? Night came with many stars. So Sylvester has all this free time now to think, and he really wishes he could be a donkey again, but he knows that nobody just walks around picking up pebbles saying, hmm, maybe I can turn that rock into a donkey. So I think he's right. Not a very good chance. Meanwhile, back at home, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan paced the floor frantic with worry. Sylvester had, had never come home later than dinner time. Where could he be? They stayed up all night wondering what had happened, expecting that Sylvester would surely turn up by morning. But he didn't, of course. Mrs. Duncan cried a lot, and Mr. Duncan did his best to soothe her. Both longed to have their dear son with them. I will never scold Sylvester again as long as I live, said Mrs. Duncan, no matter what he does. At dawn, they went about inquiring of all the neighbors. So they went about inquiring, meaning asking all their neighbors. They talked to all the children, the puppies, the kittens, the colts, the piglets. No one had seen Sylvester since the day before yesterday. So this page is interesting because it says they're talking to the children. And if you paid attention to the words, what is the name for a baby dog? Puppies, the name for a baby cat. Kittens, the name for baby horses. Colts and the name for baby pigs are piglets. So they made sure to add that specific detail in there so that we knew they were talking to the children of the animals because those are the characters of our story. And there they all are. Have you seen a dog jump rope before? They went to the police and the police could not find their child. This page really made me chuckle because do you guys know what some people sometimes call some police officers, not all, and it doesn't mean that they are, but some people call them pigs. And it's funny because they made the characters that are police officers, pigs, that author and illustrator think they're being funny. So they were talking to the police and they could not find their child. All the dogs in Oatsdale <clears throat> went searching for him. 
They sniffed behind every rock and tree and blade of grass into every nook and gully of their neighborhood and beyond, but found not a scent of him. They sniffed the rock on Strawberry Hill, but it smelled like a rock. It didn't smell like Sylvester. This is another funny page. Um, I really think the author and illustrator are being very clever in this story because, again, it's all the characters are animals, not humans. So they're having all the dogs search. Dogs have really good noses and dogs actually work with many police officers because they have such good smelling noses that they can find things. So, of course, all of the dogs would search Oatsdale because they can probably smell much better than, say, a pig or a horse. So very clever. <clears throat> but Sylvester's rock smelled like a rock. After a month of searching the same places over and over again and inquiring of the same animals over and over again, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan no longer knew what to do. They concluded that something dreadful must have happened and that they would probably never see their son again, though all the time he was less than a mile away. So even though he was really close. So Sylvester has officially been gone for a month. She looks how you tell me how she feels. Let's use some of those good words that we've been practicing. Not just sad. Tell me another word. Great. Disappointed. She is devastated. She is distraught. If you've ever heard that word, she is just so sad. She doesn't even look like she wants to finish her knitting. Oh, wow. This is a good detail. Even the flowers are wilted down. They look like they look like sad flowers, too. And there's Mr. Duncan. They tried their best to be happy, to go about their usual ways, but their usual ways included Sylvester, and they were always reminded of him. They were miserable. Life had no meaning for them anymore. So they are just so lost without him. Night followed the day, and day followed night over and over again. <clears throat> Sylvester on the hill woke up less and less often. When he was awake, he was only hopeless and unhappy. He felt he would be a rock forever, and he tried to get used to it. He went into an endless sleep. The days grew colder. Fall came with the leaves changing colors. Then the leaves fell, and the grass bent to the ground. <clears throat> when it was winter, the winds blew this way and that. It snowed. Mostly the animals stayed indoors, living on the food they had stored up. One day, a wolf sat on the rock that was Sylvester and howled and howled because he was hungry. And the snows melted, the earth warmed up in the spring sun, and things budded. Leaves were on the trees again. Flowers showed their young faces. So this has been a lot of months now that... It was fall and then it was winter and now it's spring again. So it's been a long time since Sylvester's been a rock. One day in May, Mr. Duncan, Miss, yeah, Mr. Duncan insisted that his wife go with him on a picnic. Let's cheer up, he said. Let us try to live again and be happy, even though Sylvester, our angel, is no longer with us. They went to Strawberry Hill. What are the odds they went to Strawberry Hill? Mrs. Duncan sat down on the rock. The warmth of his own mother sitting on him woke Sylvester up from his deep winter sleep. How he wanted to shout, Mother, Father, it's me, Sylvester, I'm right here. But he couldn't talk. He had no voice. He was stone dumb. What does that mean? He was stone dumb. Does that mean he's a stupid donkey? Nah, that's not what they're trying to say. They're trying to say that. A rock has no body parts. A donkey has a mouth. It makes noises in real life. But in this um, story, they talk. So does a rock, are they giving this rock human characteristics? Does this rock have a mouth or arms or anywhere sticking out of it? No, they're just saying that he's just a blob. Apparently he can think, but he can't do anything else. Mr. Duncan walked aimlessly about while Mrs. Duncan set out the picnic food on the rock. Alfalfa sandwiches, pickled oats, sassafras salad, Timothy compote. Suddenly, Mr. Duncan saw the red pebble. What a fantastic pebble, he exclaimed. Sylvester would have loved it for his collection. He put the pebble on the rock. Let's talk about what they're eating. So they're donkeys, let's not forget. And it says they're eating alfalfa sandwiches, 
pickled oats, sassafras salad, and Timothy compote. What I know about donkeys and horses and cows kind of because they're all kind of similar I'm not a farmer so if any of you out there are farmer families feel free to correct me um those are all things that grow outside uh alfalfa oats sassafras all of those things are things that they can find outside so it's funny that they didn't say oh our donkeys are eating pizzas and burgers and uh you know a, a fish sandwich so they're keeping that part realistic kind of realistic they wouldn't have a Sassafras salad, it would just be a, a bale of sassafras, I think. They sat down to eat. Sylvester was now wide awake as a donkey that was a rock could possibly be. Mrs. Duncan felt some mysterious excitement. You know, Father, she said suddenly, I have the strangest feeling that our dear Sylvester is still alive and not far away. I am, I am, Sylvester wanted to shout, but he couldn't. If only he had realized the pebble was resting on his back was the magic pebble. So it's sitting on him, but he has no idea right now. Oh, how I wish he were here with us on this lovely May day, said Mrs. Duncan. Mr. Duncan looked sadly at the ground. Don't you wish it too, father, she said. He looked at her as if to say, how can you ask such a question? Mr. and Mrs. Duncan looked at each other with Great sorrow. What does great sorrow mean? They looked at each other with great sorrow. Sadness. I wish I were myself again. I wish I were my real self again, thought, thought Sylvester. And in less than an instant, he was. So there they are. The pebbles falling off, all the food's falling off. But look at Mr. and Mrs. Duncan are like, what in tarnation is happening? You can imagine the scene that followed. The embraces, the kisses, the questions, the answers, the loving looks, the fond exclamations. When they had eventually calmed down a bit and had gotten home, Mr. Duncan put the magic pebble in an iron safe. Someday they might want to use it, but really for now, what more could they wish for? They had all they had ever wanted. The end. So I'm going to leave you today with the beginning of the story. Sylvester, Sylvester was coming home with the magic pebble because he wanted to let his mom and dad have everything they wanted in their family. They could wish for anything they wanted. They could be rich. They could, they could wish for all the pizza in the world. But now at the end of the story, now that Sylvester's back, they're not going to use the pebble. They put it in an iron safe. So like um, a safe that you can put away and it won't, nobody can get into it without the special code. Why aren't they using it? He says, they had all they, that they, they had all that they wanted. What do they mean by that? What do they have now that they couldn't get with the pebble? Go ahead and share that with a friend or a buddy. Nice reading today, friends. See you back here tomorrow.